Well, I, I want to give a, uh, my fellow Americans a little more of a bad time here, and then, then I want to expand <laughs> that to include almost everybody, and then after everybody, everything. So we have three more poems here. And this one is called Geezers in Space. <clears throat> The Case for American Exceptionalism, for John Glenn et al. All Americans are exceptional. Let them tell you. It was an exceptionally wide path God cleared for them through the exceptionally beautiful American wilderness over an exceptionally large number of dead Indians, creating the exceptional doctrine of manifest destiny, which manifests itself in their exceptional reluctance to acknowledge the exceptional scale of the genocide that is the bedrock of their exceptionality. The exceptionally rigid American Constitution has governed the United States for an exceptional length of time, disguising the plutocratic use of power as democracy exceptionally well. Look at all these exceptional immigrants ratifying these exceptional choices. The last thing anybody needs to know anything about is geriatric reactions in space. And so, an exceptionally large amount of money was blown into space to discover the effect of weightlessness on mindlessness. So, I think it says, country and empire. America is an empire, not a country, which makes it impossible to defend and pointless to attack. We could, we could get out of the whole thing if, if they'd let us. Um, they can't let go. I mean, they're too uh, not so. Okay, that, that was the Americans. Now, now we're here. moving right along to everybody else. Um, this poem is called Easter Surprise. Downwind of Christian capitalism, vile loathsome smells of Boise Cascades paper mill blow in on the wind from Wallula to foul up the thin and beautiful pagan fog of morning. People began worshiping the sun. Theology has gone downhill ever since. There are billions of people, Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, Republicans, who believe libraries full of fantasies for which there's not a shred of reproducible evidence. They meet in difficult to appreciate rooms full of noisy fools for whom one life on earth is not enough. This poem, you will recognize, those of you who take computing classes, is called Binary. This is a binary poem. If you like Ravel, if you like Valero, you'll love this. This is a binary poem. It's either a one or a zero. Please come forward and take a number. Any number will do as long as it's a one or a zero. It's either on or off. The gates are either open or they're closed. It's a binary system, a one or a zero, a digital system, no space for analog fudge. Everything and everybody else is no place. It's cosmic dualism, where you're challenged to be either a one or a zero, be on or be off, existence or non-existence, binary, breaks the law of averages, boosts the goal from the mean, washes out the middle ground. The system is either open or it's closed. It's either a one or a zero. It's the spittle of Aristotle made to resemble mana. This is your opportunity to be either a one or a zero, be part of the problem or be part of the solution. You're either a one or you're a zero. Don't look for halfway in between. Half-hearted, half-baked, half-assed, half-cocked, hermaphrodites. The microphone is either on or the microphone is off. The charge is either negative or the charge is positive. A neutral charge is a terminal contradiction among lapsed oxymorons. Stasis, neutrality, equilibrium, peace and quiet. Forget about it. They're just states you pass through on your way from one to zero with no place to stay, not even a manger for a fictitious virgin birth. Step up and take a number. Be a one or be a zero. No other numbers need apply. Be happy you're either a one 
or a zero. It's an open and shut case. You could try for more than one or less than zero, but that would make you a novelist. And we don't do probe. 